So I have this recurring dream. It's the 2008 Olympics and I have just won the marathon. The crowd in the stadium roars with a standing ovation as I step up onto the podium to get my first prize, my winner's medal, a disc of solid rhodium. Yes, rhodium. Obviously, because in 2008, the most precious metal was not gold, it wasn't platinum, it was this obscure silvery white metal that at that time was worth $10,000 per ounce. That makes it 10 times more expensive than gold, 550 times the price of silver, and 35,000 times as expensive as bronze. In my dream, I don't rest on my laurels. Well, obviously not, because only the ancient Greeks rewarded their marathon runners with laurel wreaths. Instead, I jog over to the nearest scrap metal dealer and trade in my 200 gram rhodium medal for $70,000 in cash. So maybe we shouldn't be using gold, silver and bronze for medals anymore. Maybe we should be using rhodium, iridium and the most showbiz of all the metals, palladium. Those are three rare earth metals, and all of them are rarer than gold. Rhodium is estimated at about 0.2 parts per billion in the Earth's crust. That makes it five times rarer than gold, which only has 1.1 parts per billion. And you might not have heard of it, but you've probably used it today already, because 80% of all rhodium is used in catalytic converters. So in your car, on the bus, or at your nearest power station, it's turning toxic exhaust fumes into something a bit nicer. It's actually making our world a better place. Someone should give rhodium a medal. But what would you make it out of? Well, not rhodium, obviously, because after the 2008 high, the price of rhodium crashed to about $1,000 per ounce. Today, that's less than gold. So if you wanted to spice up the Olympic medal presentation nowadays, you could choose something else that's the equivalent of a 200 gram gold medal, like a 1.5 carat diamond, 75 grams of carbon nanotubes, maybe 100 kilograms of uranium oxide, 8 tonnes of bananas, 30 tonnes of wheat, 15,000 litres of crude oil, or my absolute favourite, three tons of tea. That's as good as gold for me. No, I am serious. In 19th century Tibet, they did actually use blocks of compressed tea as currency. So if you ever wanted to cash in your investment, you just crumble off a corner and make a nice hot brew. That's the kind of financial system I like. Now, I hate to break it to you, but all of these metal calculations are just theoretical. Since 1912, the price of gold has been too high and gold medals have not actually been solid gold. Current Olympic standards say that they can be solid silver, but they must have six grams of gold on the outside. So for the last 100 years, athletes have not been going for gold. They've been going for gold plated. Olympic athletes aren't the only ones who have had their metal discs meddled with, though. If you look down your nearest sofa, you might be lucky and find a few British pennies. Or if you're really lucky, maybe a two pence piece like this one. And if you are very, very, very lucky, it will have been made before 1992. 1992 is the year that the Royal Mint stopped making coins out of 97% copper and instead just made steel discs covered in a thin layer of bronze. It was a very smart move because between 2001 and 2006, the price of copper increased by 600%, from $1,400 to $8,700 per tonne. But what does this mean for the coin in your pocket? Well, if you had a tonne of these old two pence coins, that's 145,000 of them, they would have a face value of 2,900 pounds but the copper inside them is worth £4,400. If you wanted to trade them in to a scrap metal merchant, you'd make a nice tidy profit of £1,500. So the metal inside these coins is worth more than the coin itself. Of course, this only works if you're prepared to be arrested for defacing a coin of the realm, and if you're collecting one ton of old two pence coins, you don't need a piggy bank. You need something the size of a cow. 
You might be thinking of trading in the other coins in your pocket. Well, that's not a good idea. The 50 pence piece only has four pence worth of metal in it. And a pound coin is not much better. 5p. So in this topsy-turvy economic world where one pound is worth 5p and two old pence are worth three new ones and Olympic gold medals are only 3% gold, I know what currency I want to stick with and that is a nice hot block of tea. How about we toss a coin then? Heads, you subscribe, yep? Yep, heads. Click the button. Yeah.